this is perfect because you can see how, what it means. So this is uh, Sirius. It's the brightest star in the sky. This is Aa. Uh -uh. And then you come down here to Puana. So this is the this is the hunter, yeah, Orion. And his two hunting dogs. This is the big dog. And it's a little dog right here. So it's Sirius. Okay, so Aa, uh -uh, Puana. And then over here, you have the twins is uh, Castor and Pollux, Namahoy. You can see the two stars, this one here. So this is um, Castor. No, this is Pollux and this is Castor, the, the twins. And then you come up here and you have Hopule, Papella. And it forms a bowl. So it's called, this star line is called Kika Umakali. Ka. Ka is a baler. It's a Hawaiian uh, term for baler. So to bail a canoe, they say Kika, uh, Kikaina uh, Liu. Yeah. Liu is uh, the water that gets into the canoe that you got to get out. Yeah. So Kainu Liu is to bail. Bail the water. Bail the water. So. Within this star line is all of these wonderful stars. So you have the uh, Orion. This star, this these three stars in this belt rise right in the east. They rise uh, this is like true east, ninety degrees. These stars right here, and then all these stars are on the uh, northern side, the northern hemisphere, and all these stars over here on the southern hemisphere. Part of this star line is this star down here. This is called Canopus. We call it Keli Okoni Kaleva, which means the chief of the southern sky. You can see in the southern skies here, it's like a, it's like a really bright star. And then, um, and then you got so the belt points to. Uh, Aa uh, here, but it also points to Aldebaran here. This is called Kapuahi. This is Taurus the bull. Oh, yeah. And this is the Pleiades right here, oh, Makali. Cool. Makali has two names, right? One, they say little eyes, right? Maka, Li'i, but it's also eyes of the chief, Maka Li'i. Yeah? And he was a navigator. So this is the um, bull. And then um, <coughs> Orion, I mean uh, Pleiades. And then um, another star line that preceded that starts right here with this star called uh, Eva Kili. It's the uh, uh, Eva, it's like the Eva bird, it's the shape of an Eva bird, but it's uh, like the royal Eva bird. And then from this star here, Sagan, there's a little line of stars that go right to this star right there. That's the North Star right here. So everything kind of rotates around that, yeah, circles around that. And then from Eva Kali'i, you come over here to the Great Square. There's a Great Square of Pegasus, you can see this. And, um, and then from there, it comes down to um, down here to um, the, um, the crane and all that for us. This is uh, Jupiter, that planet. So you guys know about Jupiter, right? It's the fifth planet in our solar system. And um, it's one of the brighter planets the only thing, the only one for, uh, object brighter than Jupiter is Venus. And Venus right now is a morning star. You'll see it rise in, uh, before the sunrise in the morning. Do you see Jupiter. any other planets in there? Yeah, Jupiter right here. Do you so, so you got this star line. Yeah. What went down uh, earlier was... Um, was um, Manaya Kalani, which is with um, the fish hook. Yeah, the fish hook went, uh, is down. Then this one is kind of uh, uh, 
descending and then this one's ascending and later on in the morning or in the night the next star lines coming up is uh ibikuomo which is the backbone of the lizard and that one goes from north star through uh the big dipper the seven the stars they call it nahiku the seven to hokulea and then to hikianalia and then down to the uh, southern cross and that's like the fourth so there's four major star lines yeah and this is what the navigators use through uh throughout the night but the 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 way you use it is you know where the stars rise this is a uh, uh, all through here all around 360 degrees when you're on the ocean is a star compass and stars rise at a certain place and it helps you stay oriented so when you're navigating at sea you stay oriented i mean you know if you don't if you just have a compass on your boat and you can just follow a compass you're all right right or now they just made it more simple you just follow the gps so you got a chart, <laughs> chart plotter and you just go by that to that place yeah so do the stars move place according to the scene line? Like the sun, the sun moves down uh, here and then kind of there. And the sun right, moves. got it. So no, they the don't. The they don't. They don't. They no, the stars. Be in that direction. Yeah. The star is going to stay the same place. The only time they're going to, they might change is when you change your location on the earth. So if you're here and you're looking at these stars like this. Solar system. <laughs> when you're looking at these stars here, if you're in Tahiti, yeah. they're going to look totally different. Like if you're in Tahiti right now, this star is going to be higher. This star is going to be lower. The whole thing is going to be tilted. Different map. Yeah. And it's just where, where, how you are on the uh, face of the earth, north or south. If you go down to New Zealand, you're farther south. It's even more radical that this is going to be up here. And then this one is going to be almost on the horizon. So Every, how does that work to navigate when you're coming from another place? In your points from not really Yeah, well, you gotta, you gotta, so that's just part of your, uh, your studying and stuff and understanding the surface of uh, uh, how, the, how everything works. So for instance, like right now, the North Star back here, because where we're standing here on the beach, we're at like 21 degrees north. So the North Star is 21 degrees above the horizon. <clears throat> Say we went down to some island that was like at about nine degrees north. The whole sky is gonna change to the degree that the, uh, at nine north, the North Star is now only nine degrees. It's less than half of that above the horizon. And then when you go to the equator, the North Star is right on the horizon. And you, you can't see it because it's right on the horizon. <clears throat> and then all the stars that are down south, like this star here, right now, is about, say, nine degrees above the horizon. This star, Archinara. And so, What's going to happen is, uh, as you go, say, so it's nine degrees now. If you go down to uh, 10 degrees south, I mean north, 10 degrees north, it's going to get 10 degrees higher. So this gets 10 degrees higher. So it's now uh, 19 degrees above on the southern horizon. The north star is like only nine degrees. It gets lower, nine degrees. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I don't know if you guys are able to follow this, but the tilt of the earth and how the heavens, it, it changes radically as you go. Yeah. So, like, which stars do you mostly looking at when you when you're at Happens? Like, like some stars probably like they move differently than. Yeah. So for orientation, <clears throat> you got two hundred stars that you're using. You got to know them. But the four cardinal points are always the key things. So this one here, that's uh, east, and there's other stars down there. So the stars that are closer to east, like this one here. And these, you use those. But there's also stars up here that point to the North Star. So these two stars here, 
So this is a hokule capella. This is, they call it a hokule because it's like a lay right here. But these two stars, they point to the North Star. And then this, there's a string of stars here. And then there's other stars up here, groups of stars, like these two here. And um, if you can't see the North Star, you use these to find that point on the horizon up north. And then there's other stars uh, down here that help you also find that, that point down here. So let's see. Well, one of them is this, it's Kelly Oconi Kaleva and this star here, Burzan. So when they get to this point where they're right over each other, they point directly to south. Those two, the yeah, you see, you see, uh-uh, here, the brightest star in the sky, the one above it, Mirzam and uh, Canopus, as they rise and they get up here, where they're right above each other, like this, this would be Canopus uh, and Mirzam would be up here. When that's what they call, um, they get to what they call the meridian. The meridian is like you take a line from north all the way down to south. And the meridian is a point because all the stars, they rise and then they get to their highest point. And then after that, they start setting. You guys see that? It's like a rainbow, right? You get to the, the top of the rainbow and then after that, you start sliding down the other side. That's what the stars do. They rise, they get to their highest point in that, in that half circle and then they start to set after that but the meridian that halfway point when they get to that point and this is part of your navigation training is to know like this is a pointer those are pointers and there's other ones all through the night in the sky so yeah real quick um the meridian is where the star goes to the highest that's the highest it's, it's going to get to yeah from our horizon our horizon, as opposed to the zenith, which is directly over our zenith head. is direct straight right. up ahead, up Just over here. Clarifying yeah. that, right? Yeah. So we want to measure its uh, so elevation you measure from the horizon. Its highest point is the meridian, right? In the when it gets to the meridian, mm -hmm. the highest it's going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 just to kind of help people, if you think about the idea that the North Star doesn't move, it's there all the time. And that all the stars do this around it, and it makes like a uh, a hoop. Like if you held it at an angle, so a star will rise here, it'll hoop up and around, and come back down over here. So one that rises in the east, it kind of goes south a little bit, and then comes back to the west. Just so you guys can kind of visualize, there's a ring, and it follows that ring path. If that makes sense. Yep. Just to clarify a little, yeah. Yeah, the North Star does not move, yeah. That's why it's an awesome beacon. It sits yeah. right there. Yeah, so yeah. the little so stickers like, that like that around it. Sorry. But like, as the night goes on, um, Orion fell, it's like, it's not always east there, right? It sets in the west. So like, yeah, how did the Hawaiians tell the time? Or I guess the moon too. Because we like how. Yeah, you can, I mean, you use the stars as a clock and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the you know time throughout the night and then um, seasons also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one option. The other option is, um, I mean, if it's, the other option is to, you uh, scale down the amount of uh, sail you have up. And you, you, you're always gonna be better if you can keep moving, you know, because when the waves, you never, you're not a, a, a you know, a sitting duck, yeah, for waves and other things to, to hit you. And so for navigation, you know, at that point, yes, we have been in that situation and you just, 
put smaller sails down so you can keep moving. And uh, there's a peer, there's a point even in the big winds and the big surf, if the canoe is traveling at about like five to seven knots, um, it's real nice. Even with all the big stuff going on around it, you know, it she just um, travels through that really nicely. But you gotta um, you you hold your general direction with the wind and the swells. And, and at that point, because you don't see any of this, all the cloud cover and everything, it's the, um, the swells that you follow. Like for instance, when we sailed home, 2009, we sailed home from Palmyra Island. And Palmyra is about a thousand miles south of us. And we sailed home and the whole 10 days that we were at sea, we didn't, it was cloud cover the whole time. So, during the day, we steered by the, the, the glow of the sun throughout the day, and then at night was the glow of the moon. But the wind and the, uh, the swell angle was the key. The swell stayed constant the whole time. So we stayed right in the trough, and we just cornered the swell, and we came right up to the big island. And so that's, that's like the, I mean, that's the kind of stuff you learn from, you know, our teachers, Mao Pia Lug, yeah? That's how you do it. So you, you practice it, then you see the results. That's the only way you're going to do it is by practicing it and seeing the results and stuff. You do. So, mm -hmm. so one, of the, um, one of the basic things is for, as a navigator, is you split every day into 12 hour periods. So it's the sunrise to sunset, and that's one block. And then the next block is from sunset to sunrise. So at sunrise, at the first light, the navigator is like really working really hard to um, see his environment in that day. So the swell angles. So you're looking at swell angles, swell heights, swell the thickness and the shape of the swells and uh, the changes, you know, throughout the day, you know, every day and uh, the wind. So when the, when the, the sunrise is so important that when the sun is like right here, breaking the horizon, that's your most accurate um, position you're going to get for navigation. You set up the canoe. And on Hokulea, on the canoe, there's also a canoe compass. You know, the railings of the canoe are marked. It's a canoe compass. And you calibrate, the navigator calibrates the, the canoe compass to the, the star compass, you know, which is around you. And he sets the, uh, the course for the day. And then uh, he's reading the wind angle, the swell angle. And so... You just get used to that. So you do that. It carries you through the day. Because after the sun, you know, sun rises, it gets up to about this point, about 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. You can no longer use it with any kind of accuracy. So between 10 a.m. all the way to like 2 p.m. when it gets here, you're steering with, and, and you're guide, being guided by the swells and the wind. And then when the when heavenly bodies get to this point coming down, then you can start using it again yeah just before sunset you're recalibrating your world and your environment you know the swell angles the wind angles you're looking at the uh, clouds and seeing all that what's happening with the, the clouds it shows you weather and change of weather and stuff like that and that's what you're looking at when you're looking at the, the swells also <clears throat> is um is the swell height changing you know, that's showing uh, heavier, heavier weather, you know, it's, it's some area around you and things like that, that might that's, affect you. Got some torches out tonight. Yeah. Hey. It's cruising. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. I mean, all of that, you know, um, Mark Ellis over here is one mm -hmm. of our captains on Hokulea. And uh, he also knows a lot about all this stuff that we're talking about, the navigation and all that. But the blessing is like Mark, you know, he's not only a captain and a, a navigator, but he's a teacher. 
So that's a real blessing to have the teachers, you know, because they pass that on. You know, it's, I mean, it's just not good enough for us guys to learn it. We're going to have to <coughs> pass it on. You know, from whatever we know, and then the younger guys, they get better as they get better and better. <coughs> That's the whole thing. That's the whole deal. Yeah, so I mean that's just a little bit of it, but it's um that's what's happening. You know, this is all nighttime stuff. This right here, a night like this on a voyage is a real gift. You know, this makes a navigator's uh job so much easy. Yeah. You know, all these stars and uh, and everything. And, you know, like how uh, eventually at the North Star never moves. If you can, I mean, from here down to the equator, if you can see the North Star, you don't have to use anything else. <laughs> you can just use that and you can steer and you'd be like golden, totally golden. You know exactly where you are and everything. And then when you get south, then you lose the North Star. But again, I said, you got these pointers, all these pointers here. Yeah, these guys down south, these guys up north. Yeah, right here. So you have all of those. And there's a whole constant train of those down south and up north throughout the night that is helping you. But um, yeah, and then like, like I said, during the daytime, half the voyage, half of your voyage is daytime, no stars. It's all about this. Uh, the sun, you also have the moon during the day, so you can use the moon also during the day as a heavenly body. And it's the ocean swells and the wind. So that's just kind of how it works. Yeah, we've been blessed that um, <clears throat> the three founders of the Polynesian Voyaging Society, Herb Kane, uh, Dr. Ben Finney, and Tommy Holmes, you know, they kind of... Uh, so we talked about creating a vision and then creating a, um, a path, you know, to that. And look what they created. They never imagined that Hokulea was built for one voyage in 1976. It was, that was it. It was built quick and dirty to sail down to Tahiti and come back and they're going to document it. And um, then it was going to be a scholarly type of um, knowledge to challenge other bodies of knowledge that said, no, uh, the guys, the migrations came into um, from the East, from South America on rafts. And that's how they, they came into uh, Polynesia on rafts. <laughs> but every place you go, you see rafts or you see canoes? <laughs> you see canoes. Canoes on all the beaches in the island, Hawaiian islands. Canoes in all the beaches and all the bays in Tahiti. Canoes in all the beaches and bays in um, Aotearoa, which is New Zealand, the Cook Islands, Samoa, Tonga, all the Pacific islands. You know, any island you go to, you see a canoe. You go to New Guinea, you see canoes. <laughs> Nobody's, I mean, maybe somebody got a raft, but they ain't going inner island on rafts. <laughs> but, um, Anyway, she was built for one uh, 5,000 miles. And uh, here she is in 2022. And she's um, sailed over 200,000 miles. And um, we had no navigators in Hawaii in 1975. First navigator, Nainoa Thompson, in 1980. And then 1992 another cadre of navigators and now we're on our third fourth generation of navigators and captains and it's just been wonderful and then you know it's all throughout the islands all the islands there's seven canoes now voyaging canoes in hawaii so hokulea was the first one hawaii loa was the second one makali'i was also at the same time as hawaii loa so they were like twins at that time and then uh, Kikianalia, and then um, on Kauai, there's Namahoe, and then on Maui, there's um, the Pi'ilani of Ma uh, Mokiho Pi'ilani, 
And there's also one in Hilo, Hukualakai, for seven. And these are all big voyaging canoes that are capable of doing long voyages. Imagine that. <coughs> yeah. Nothing for hundreds of years, you know, maybe four or five hundred years, no voyaging canoes. And then Hukulea is built. Nobody knew anything. You know, it was like a recipe for disaster, but it just kept pushing through. And now it's like so amazing. Yeah. And so that's just an example of where you can take anything. You know, anything you want to do that you feel is beneficial and worthwhile and so awesome that you can take it there. Right? There really is no limits to it. Bruce, yeah, this is, uh, you did. This was, you're always so generous with your time and your EK and, and stories. And that means a lot to me. I know it means a lot to all of us. So thanks for hanging out with us tonight. And yeah, hopefully we're going to get into some more fun and uh, we'll let you know in case you want to, in case you uh, ever want to pop back in. Sure. I mean, I, I just got to, um, you know, validate what Dan and his gang are doing, you know with uh, Purple Maya and all that. I mean, it's just a gift. It really is a gift to um, all you guys and all us guys and anyone who's, uh, <clears throat> who sees, you know, these, these are our islands. Yeah, these are our islands. You know, we live here, you know, our, our, our uh, capacity to take Kuliana, you know, and a uh, bit of ownership for things you know, is, is uh, only limited by, you know, our time and, you know, our willingness to do stuff. But all the things that we do, you know, like all the work we do at Okulea and stuff like that, it's only one thing. It's a gift. You know, it's a gift of our time and our aloha and stuff. So it can keep uh, moving forward. You can, you know, every time we do it, we're teaching people. So... I want to say mahalo to you guys. I'm, I'm so stoked that you guys are here and doing your stuff. The Zoomers, the Zoomers all wish they were here. They share their aloha too <laughs> with you and their mahalo to you, Bruce. Uh, this really was a beautiful, this was an amazing time. I am excited. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is joining me, but I get to walk back to Kulio'o <laughs> through the uh, rising tide here and uh, I might get to see lots of fun things I'll go with you. so oh I might have a buddy on the walk um, but yeah feel free to just uh, share your own mahalo with Bruce and uh, uh, yes. follow follow me follow me if you if you dare uh, <laughs> some of those have to. Aloha, right on. oh god we got the kind of long-winded here yeah.